at the University of Nigeria and Suka, second year, and also any two high court judges and a versatile entrepreneur who also doubles the young medical students. Ladies and gentlemen, it is pertinent to all the Nigerian judicial sector. First lady of previous states between 1999 and 2007, in recognition also of her iconic judicial prowess and law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a position, Judicial and Law Enforcement Act, and a successful disengagement from the Supreme Court and country. To her people, she is a pride and starlet. I'm the permission of the Honorable the Chief Justice of Nigeria to announce that the, the reviled spouse of Oba Egbema people, the idolized Queen African heroine. She was the inaugural chairperson. International Federation. She served the Nigerian judiciary. Through her mien and conduct, she has succeeded in erecting an edifice of hope and optimism in the minds of her teeming admirers and even generations yet unborn would be privileged to access and behold her great works in the judicial landscape that have already been well documented and displayed in vital areas of the shelves of various libraries across the world. Honorable Justice uh, Peter Ordley, until this very auspicious moment was the Deputy Chairman of the National Judicial Council, short the Chairman of the NJC Interview Committee, Vice Chairman Legal Practitioners Privileges Committee, Deputy Chairman, Board of Governors uh, of the National Judicial Institute, and Chairman, Education Committee of the NGI, on others. She took the oath of office as Justice of the Supreme Court on the 6th of November 2011, her rise to the Court of Appeal was more of a reward for hard work, inherent passion for her chosen profession, dedication to duty, and above all, resolute application of law and its true letters and words to all cases that came to her. She is one judicial officer that is never afraid to say things the way they are and also can never be stampeded from calling a spade by its name irrespective of who's out to God. Her landmark judgments and several other incisive judicial pronouncements are commonplace and they have recalibrated both the thinking of lawyers the application of the law in our jurisprudence. She earned her well-deserved elevation to the Court of Appeal on the 10th of October 2004 and assumed the duties of the Abuja Division, from where she was later transferred to Kaduna Judicial Division, where she was the presiding justice until her rise to the Supreme Court after seven years of meritorious judicial service that level of education. Honorable Justice uh, Odili was appointed to the River State Judiciary as judge of the State High Court in Port of Court in July 1992 and served in that capacity different parts of that state till October 2004 when her industry and meticulous attention to judicial details under her a well-deserved seat in the Appeal Court Abuja Division. She was posted to Abuja Division. Of course, which I happened to be the PJ even there then. Now, prior to her appointment as High Court Judge, my Lord had worked in different mm -hmm. capacities within the River State Judiciary where she exhibited impregnable dexterity in the chagrin of our close watches and admirers alike. 
He was the chairperson of Juvenile Court, 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 1979 and 1981, magistrate grade 1 and magistrate uh, grade 1 from 1981 to 1992, magistrate grade 2, 1979 to 1981, chairperson Juvenile Court, Benin City, 1978 to 1979. Upon graduating from the prestigious University of Nigeria and Suka, Enugu campus, popularly called <laughs> UNEC, with an LLB degree second class upper division, in July 1976, his lordship immediately proceeded to the Nigeria Law School Lagos in September 1976 and completed the mandatory one year program in July 1977. She did her NYC in Oakland State Ministry of Justice of Yakuta from uh, July 1977 to October 1978, where she was a pupil state council. My Lord Justice Odney was born to the family of His Royal Highness Eddie Barista Barnett Sandy Chekbu Zenwa and Ogboze Bernadette Mwatuma Zenwa, all of blessed memory. <laughs> On 12th of May 1952, in a highly commercially inclined community called Amudi Obizi, and then Hite Baisi, local government area of Imo State. Those who are conversant with Baisi will know that every son and the daughter of uh, that ebulwantly historical tribe is naturally endowed with remarkable commercial skills. I am not surprised, therefore, that my lord emerged the all-round best graduating student in commercial law and property <laughs> law, respectively, in the Faculty of Law at the University of Nigeria in 1976. The inherent passion and reputation for hard work and industry were seamlessly deployed by my lord to her judicial practice by attaching noticeable seriousness and zeal to her work all through the 44 years of service to her fatherland. Mm -hmm. She started early education at St. Benedict Primary School in Obis as in Haiti, Imo State in 1959, and thereafter attended other primary schools in Abia and Lagos states before obtaining the first school level certificate in 1966. She completed her secondary school education at Queen of the Rosary College, Sonisha, a number state, where she backed grade one aggregate 16 West African Examination Certificate. Uh, you know, if it is a place where we will, we will clap, we would have, I would have asked you to clap for, <laughs> but we don't do that in the court. In the course of our judicial engagements, my lord took time off to serve different organizations and associations in different capacities and even held leadership positions. Between 2018 and 2020, she was the president, National Association of Women Judges of Nigeria, chairperson, bill drafting committee, uh, human trafficking and child labor eradication, and under women trafficking and child labor eradication foundation, 2002-2004, chairperson, Steering Committee for the 2001 United Nations Volunteers Project in River State, Secretary, Parish Council, St. Patrick's Catholic Church, Ndoni, River State, 1989-1999, Trojara, Magistrates Association, River State, 1987-1992, President, Marine Board of Inquiry into the 1979 uh, Buguma Board um, Disaster, 1985, inaugural chairperson, International Federation of Women Lawyers, FIDA, River State, 
1986 to 1988, to mention just a few. His Lordship has uh, rendered meritorious services to her fatherland, traded where the weak dreaded. And today, she is embalsomed in a blaze of glory as her remarkable accomplishments now adorn her path to retirement with enchanting glitters that will nourish the memory of her 44 years of judicial activity. In recognition of her talent feats in the judiciary, the federal government of Nigeria thought it expedient to confer the prestigious national honor of the commander of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Siabar, on her on the 17th of September 2012. In December 2013, his lordship was inducted as fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. A recognition of her immense contributions to the growth of the Catholic denomination and the obvious exhibition of life of piety and uh, unveiled uh, obeisance. His Lordship was awarded the Benementi Medal by the Holy See during the sixth convocation ceremony of the Catholic Institute of West Africa. My Lord has traveled different countries of the world and uh, presented scholarly papers at different conferences and workshops bordering on the development of the justice sector to further what the adjudicative proficiency of our audience. Some of these uh, intellectual masterpieces are, just to mention a few, keynote addresses at the Conference of Justices of the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal on the role of the judiciary and the enforcement of tax laws in Abuja 2022. Keynote addresses the workshop for judges for legal issues in telecommunication, the Communication Commission, Enugu 2019. Keynote addresses at uh, the National Summit on Justice, Sheraton Hotel, and Towers, Abuja 2017. Just mentioned a few. Now, his Lordship's robust contribution to the development of our jurisprudence are uh, inviolable and reverting. Uh, impeccable attention to details in every matter brought before her is captivating and relating to her proficiency in the dispensation of justice, which reclines on her master of law, the law, presents her as a woman of letters and academic prestige. Her judgments are not only incisive, but also analytical and intellectually engaging by all standards. She has been a formidable ally, an admirable pillar of support, and indeed a, joy, a jolly good fellow to all of us. If I say we are going to miss her dearly, I think I will only be presenting a shadow that is less in size than the proportion to her real substance itself. My Lord, frankly speaking, you are a blessing to the Nigerian judiciary and the Supreme Court in particular. Your imprints on our judicature will remain indelible. His Lordship has delivered several leading judgments, as earlier mentioned, but space and time will not permit me to go into details. However, some of these cases are highlighted here by in person. One of them was the case of uh, Alimi and others against Kosebini and others, reported in 2016-7 SC. Part 1, page 41, where the Supreme Court was called upon to decide whether the level of judgment in chambers of the consent of the parties waives or dispenses with the provision of section 36, 1 and 3 of 
the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1996 and also whether judges um, chamber can be classified as a regular courtroom. Another leading judgment was given by uh, his lordship uh, was in Mimiko and the others where the court was called upon to determine inter alia whether a witness who was not present at all the polling units where practices were said to have been there <coughs> were said to have occurred can testify as to what transpired at those units or stations. Honorable Justice Sodley has never for once shaked her responsibilities at the domestic level all through her near five decades sojourn in the Nigerian judiciary. She has been a loving and a caring mother that always put her home and family above every other consideration. Even while traversing the judicial landscape, she never at any time relegated the home front to the background. She took the interests of her nuclear and extended families closely to her heart and did everything within her ability to nurture their welfare to the highest level of satisfaction. She is happily married to her Arthrop, His Excellency Dr. Peter Artunaya of Dili, C.O.N., former governor of River State, and are blessed with four children who have started making impressive marks their various uh, professions. My Lord, before I end my speech, I would like to tell you that life is like a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Nature abhors vacuum, so you must not permit any void in your journey to li of life. We have all known you as a woman of great intellect. Do not hesitate to unleash the lioness in you on the life that awaits you the retirement. You should cherish and relish every moment of your life because the water that flows past you in a stream will never flow back again. From the depth of our hearts, we say happy 70th birthday to you and wish you good luck, God's guidance, graceful aging, good health, long life, and prosperity. On this note, may I crave your indulgence, my lords, your excellencies, distinguished invited guests. My Lord, I stand here representing our leader, Professor Ben Wabiesi, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. 
The practice at the inner bar is that the most senior of the members of the inner bar at any occasion speaks as our representative. What they say remains our leader, we respect him, we adore him. My president, I pay my respect, sir. My Lord, uh, my short speech or remarks will be in three parts. The first, about Our Lady, my Lord. The second part, about just a few points of the basket full of presentations the body of senior advocate of Nigeria has and reservations about our profession. And the third part again, I will come to my noble lord. My lord, on behalf of the body of senior advocates of Nigeria, we rejoice with you. We felicitate with you. You are an inspiration. But if I may ask, and I, we don't need an answer, are you actually 70? <laughs> You look so radiant. You look so beautiful. You look so ebullient. You know, I anybody who sees you would think that my brother Peter and yourself are just preparing to walk down the eyes. Ah. And that to him, handsome man, you have eyes for good things. <laughs> <laughs> you spotted that right from the university. <coughs> and you maintain her, and she also maintains you. My Lord, on a occasion like this, we have to thank God for his enablement, for his grace, for what he has been, and what he will continue to be. When your Lordship looks back, right from your days in this primary school, count the number of people those who are there in the classrooms with you. From the primary school, you migrated to the secondary school. And then you moved to the university. <clears throat> and then to the law school. And you started as a magistrate. From there to the high court, to the court of appeal, to the Supreme Court. How many? Because it is only when we count our blessings that we will be able to appreciate God. <coughs> Irrespective of the vicissitudes of life, irrespective of the vagaries of the weather, how many of them, how many of them ended up even being a judge of the High Court? How much more of a justice of the Court of Appeal and how much more, more of a justice of the Supreme Court? Here we are, all the actors of the judiciary dressed here in different attires, although we look as a masquerades, mm -hmm. but to celebrate your lordship. We thank God on your behalf. We thank God for your lordship. To Ross Adinaba, we notice one thing about your lordship. At no time, and I speak for myself as well, at no time did you raise your voice against any council. Years back, a justice of the Supreme Court was exiting. And he said one thing, I think it was Justice Unwafo. He said, at no time was I rude to any council, and at no time was any council rude to me. To your lordship. I've appeared before your lordship severally, severally. Some won, some lost. And that even the last time I appeared before your lordship on a very contentious commercial matter, your lordship was presiding. And I asked a question, I didn't know when it came out. I said, has the law changed? Your lordship just smiled. You maintain your calmness. You maintain your cool, you maintain your balance. Always, we commend you, we commend your lordship. 
My Lord, you are what you are by the grace of God, not by power, not by might. Yet, excellent results here and there, but God has spotted you out. To me as a person, I rejoice with the family. And why and how? I've been a friend of the family, knowing Peter, his excellency, since 1992, when we had a meeting of Pompadour, you presided. I was attorney general of the old Ondo State then. And since then, we've, been, we've maintained the friendship. I was, at a point in time, leading counsel to the family, and in particular, the late father was my mentor. So, I was there with you, we nominated him to the body of Benjamin, and he died as a Benjamin. We were there when he was being buried. And what will I say? I say, on behalf of the body of Benjamin, that you have your lordship, you have a goodly heritage. So, no wonder, no wonder you have behaved so well. You have conducted yourself so well. And I cannot improve on what my lord, the horrible Chief Justice of Nigeria, has said. Except that I don't have the muscle. You want to conjure all those adjectives. <laughs> my lord, we learn from the feet of your logic. I want to appreciate your, my lord, the horrible Chief Justice. Let me say this, sir, and I'm just going to repeat it. There is no judiciary in the world, and I've done my research, and I want I stand to be corrected, that is saddled with responsibility of deciding judicial cases, sorry, political cases like the Nigerian judiciary. And as a result of that, we have a lot of insults, a lot of attacks, a lot of assaults, criticisms here and there about the legal profession generally and the judiciary in particular. It is high time we stopped it. It is high time also we try as much as possible to appreciate where the judiciary has jurisdiction and where the judiciary does not have jurisdiction. Cases that are reckless, cases that are justifiable, and the ones that are not. Judiciary cannot be a partisan pitch. It is not Old Trafford, where you test run anything and everything. We have to stop it. The law has not changed. And I also stand to be corrected that judiciary does not interfere, does not descend into, the poli into political matters, except as narrowly provided by the Electoral Act, as amended even up to now. And it is high time also we take note of this so that all these abuses and insults will stop. My Lord, I was out of the country a few weeks ago. I saw some newspaper reporting, some people calling judges' names, insulting them, and some, you know, saying that the judiciary has become a supermarket, what a few. It is because of political cases. I respect our political juggernauts who are there, who are here. A good number of them are my clients. But at the same time, we must draw a line. We just have to draw a line. My Lord, as far back as the celebrated case of Nwakwan State, the Court of Appeal there, Ola Tawura, Ogundare, and, uh, and Aikawa, there was this matter, a, a criminal matter. Umwako was based in Onisha. Prosecution started in Onisha. All of a sudden, they transferred the matter to Enugu. The judge gave judgment, convicted him, and your brothers of the Supreme of the Court of Appeal then said, even as within the same Anambra state, that while transferring the matter, or while prosecuting him, in Enugu when he was based in Onitsha. That's within the state. <coughs> and here we are, here we are in Nigeria. We have occasions where matters in Nanambra in particular are taken to, to Samfara. And 
to Jigawa, brother. And the judge will assume jurisdiction. I was before saying Jack Robinson, judgment was given. And my Lord, a primary election that was to hold on Saturday, a judge gave judgment, restraining that judgment, declaring that primary election that was yet to hold on Saturday void. That judgment was given on Friday. My Lord, I want to commend your lot, the NJC, the NJC under your left. But it is not enough in that kind of situation for the Supreme Court to say the judge will not be promoted to the Court of Appeal. Who says every judge wants to go to the Court of Appeal? Who says every judge wants to go to the Supreme Court? My Lord, the Supreme Court gave the decision that that judge should be disciplined and that the lawyer sue masterminded the originating processes from the High Court should also be disciplined. We have to do something about it. My Lord, the second point, in fact, if we don't nip it in the board, forum shopping, forum shopping, and I repeat again, forum shopping, to those, the bar and the bench, we just have to arrest it now and now, and not later than now. The second part, my Lord, is um, about conflicting decisions of the Supreme Court and also the Court of Appeal. My Lord, we want to plead. The body of senior advocates, we've had occasion to send letters, two letters, to your Lordship, my Lord, the Honorable the Chief Justice of Nigeria, signed by Professor Wabeze, our leader, and we refer your Lordship to some of the cases. My Lord, we want to suggest that I want to suggest, life is ongoing. Like my Lord has given the example of bicycle riding. Life is ongoing. There is always room for improvement. Supreme Court cannot be insular. And I stand to be corrected. And I want to commend your logic for two recent decisions involving the Union Bank and GTB. That's the way it should be. That is the way it should be. When the Supreme Court finds that any judgment of it has been given out of human error. Nobody is accusing the court of any other thing. But human error is only God that does not make mistakes. The Supreme Court should. We want to plead. It's the old tradition. I did it without being immodest. And coincidentally, my Lord, the Honorable Chief Justice, presided on two occasions. And my brother, Latif Fagbeni, was, you know, he was on the opposing side. We argue for two days here. And the Lordship succeeded to the two applications. And my Lord, let me just remind your Lordship of what has been and what we believe and what we pray, what we urge your Lordship to continue doing. It's what your brother, that juries of juries, assure. DSE of blessed memory, in a foreword to a book titled Rotten Williams to the Law. Your brother said this. My Lord, I'm very brief. It is normal to have the biographies of great judges through the cases, and equally normal to have biographies of great advocates through the cases which they have conducted in the courtroom. And he went further. As an example of how this book has provided a welter of material for seminars, then he referred to Motayo, the Locus Classicus, on color of employment. Then he referred to other cases, and he said, any advocate who would choose to take an on an APS court in such circumstance will require what Professor Konko called courage and skill. My, my Lord, let me add, and also scholarship. It is the tradition of the profession. It is there in the rules of court. And he went for that. Rodin Williams utilized both and got the APS court to change his earlier and well reasoned decision in post Johnson and that for surely the law. That was probably what also obtained in the case of Akinsaya versus UBA. And his lordship also said, incidentally, I wrote the lead judgment in the case, part of the government resource where the Supreme Court also reversed itself. And my Lord, there are cases whereby my noble Lord, that fantastic jurist, Belo JSC, 
Victor Belo CDN. We are even the full court. Belo DSC, Belo CDN said, we erred. And I want to commend to your lordships the dissenting justice of. Uh, Some of the dissenting the pronouncements of some of your lordships, in some cases, about the right, about the power, about the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to reverse itself. And that was what Tijani Abubakar zeroed on. That is the last stop, the first stop. But my lord, about the conflicting decisions, there is confusion at the bar. There is also confusion on the part of the lower courts of which we are to follow. Our position, sir, is that your lordship, my noble lord, the horrible, the chief justice of Nigeria, should, we are pleading with your lordship, constitute a team to look at these cases and therefore let us look at them together, invite amicus or amici, as the case may be, to address your lordship. And in appropriate cases, your lordship should so that there will be certainty in law. It's very important. There must be certainty in law. And law should always be based on precedent. My Lord, one should not be watching over his shoulders, coming to court, be so scared, be under trepidation as to whether or not he should base his brief of argument on previous decisions of your lordships. Then that will no longer be law. And like how they have just said in this way, he said, what is the essence of law if law cannot redress the wrong done by law? This is exactly what we are pleading. And my Lord, about what is going on in the country, everybody wants problems that are not problems created by the judiciary to be solved by the judiciary. And then there have been attacks here and there. We, or the body of senior advocates, we always stand by the judiciary. We don't support anything on toward, but at the same time, there are ways of doing things. There are different ways of doing things. We don't just go to a judge's house at night as if that judge is a rogue. My Lord, even armed robbers deserve to be treated decently under our laws. And that was why on occasions in the past, not once, not twice, when judges' houses were raided, we stood up, and I in particular, is a statement that this is never done. We have to stop it. And I appreciate what the learned attorney general said this morning, apologizing for what happened to my lord. But I asked a question when the press interviewed me. I said, what of if she's not a lioness that she is? What of if she's not an amazing? What of if she doesn't know her onions? It's never done. We appreciate the honorable attorney general. But let us talk to the powers that be. Leave the judiciary alone. Stop molesting them. Politicians are there. How many houses are raided overnight? If a judge does anything wrong, there is room for us to redress, to address, to ask the court to, over, to look at it again. And in house also, there are ways we can. But then, judiciary is not inferior and can never be inferior to any arm of government, be it the executive, be it the judiciary, be it the, be it the legislature. And I posed a rhetoric question. I said, could they have done it to a governor? Could they have done it to, 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 to a minister? My Lord, we thank your lordship for what you did. That's the way it should be. You, judges should not be lily livered. I don't, we don't, we don't talk. But your right is your right. And again, my Lord, about discipline in our profession, a magistrate signed the warrant of arrest. I mean, start, no, search warrant. I mean, did not, the magistrate not read it. He went to search the house of the justice of the Supreme Court. Oh, no. Even if it were to be a fellow magistrate, he signed that warrant on a Friday. Let us speak the truth. On the Friday, what did she expect? Or what was being expected? Then she will be arrested. She will be there Saturday, she will be there Sunday. Then, following morning, what would have happened? Enough is enough. We must all condemn it. And my Lord, the NJC must also at times wield the big stick. 
Now, my Lord, we, it's not, we are rejoicing with your Lordship. It's not complete, complete. Let us now come to the last aspect of my remarks. My Lord, you are a Christian of the Catholic denomination. Thus far, the Lord has set your Lordship. We thank God for your children, two of them who are judges. We thank God for the medical doctor, and we thank God for your husband. In your heart of hearts, my Lord, I don't have any power of clairvoyance. I don't read your mind. But I know you might have been reading Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And at times you might have been reading Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. But now, we have, we have gotten the invitation for the thanksgiving. Let, I'm just reading, I'm just advising Psalm 124 to be there and your Lord should read it. If the Lord has not been on my side, what will Israel say? When the waters of this world have attempted to overflow, when people have robbed you up, when they have besieged your house during the day, during the night. If the Lord has not been your side, I hope you will put it there, Psalm 124. It's very important. My Lord, on this note, we rejoice with all Lord, the body of sinner advocates. You look 70, I mean, they say you are 70, but you don't look 70. This is the time for your Lordship to take care of her brother, put on the jeans, Put on the face cap, go on holidays. You know, if you want in within Africa, go to my rituals, go to Miami, go to where it is, where it matters. Please give yourself some peace. You need to take care of the family. God will take care of you. This is the way we pull out. This same way, the profession of law pulls out gloriously, gloriously. our own people our own heroes and heroines. Your Lordship, you are one. Our heart blesses you. Our heart prays for you. And we say, the days ahead of you, and the months ahead, and the years ahead, God will bless. God will prosper. Amen. As you retire, may you retire into good health, Amen. sound health, sound mind. And when you look back, you don't retire actually, your judgments speak volumes for your Lordship. We read them. Long may your Lordship live. And this is the first time we are singing for Bruce, for he is a very, she's a very good fellow. And you know, this, it means a lot. That means that your retirement is a watershed. God bless your Lordship. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Donegal. Protocol, even though I didn't capture everybody as I should have, is the privilege I have taken since today is my birthday. My speech as valedictorian upon the exit from the Supreme Court bench on this day, 12th May, 2022. Introduction. I have, upon the attainment of 70 years at midnight of this day, will be more comfortable speaking a little on my life and current affairs. My judicial life's journey are already in the public domain and can be discerned from my judgments from the magistracy to the apex court bench, and the mistakes found in them are of the head, never of the heart, as I do not delude myself on perfection, which is the exclusive preserve of the Almighty God. I was born Mary Uki Bege Nzemwa, the middle name from the now River State on account of my family dealing with the Opobo Boni communities in the palm oil trade in the olden days and thereby acquired some of their cultures and language. That name, Uki Bege, was changed or translated to the Igbo form in 1971 while registering for the West African examinations and the principal, Mrs. Lucy Onka, showing me the space for name, which space could not contain the middle name. It had to be translated by her, and I agreed that Uki Ego be the replacement. I believe in factual events 
no matter how trivial they may seem. I understand the former, no, rather, the Deputy Governor of Imo State, Professor Placid Njoko, is here. The above of my name settled, I shall get back to the very beginning. I also forgot the governor of Plato State, who is also a distinguished lawyer, Simon Lalong. I shall get back to the very beginning, which is that my parents, as has now been stated, were Bernard Chibu Nzenwa and Benedict Mwatuman Nzenwa Nichinere. My father was a lawyer, member of Body of Ventures, chairman Enugu Rangers Football Club and Spartans Football Club of the old Imo State. And later, he became the traditional ruler of our community of Obizi, taking the title of Obizi III. My mother was a seamstress and a trader in textiles. I was told that my parents began their marital life in 1950 in the present Quara State, with my elder sister Martina being born in Loring, and I was born when they resided in Kayama, even though the delivery was done at Orionoha Maternity in Onicha, Ezinihite Mbise, Imo State, and as a baby I was taken to Kayama. That birth was in 1952, 12th of May. My younger sister Agnes was born in 1954, and the following year, 1955, my father proceeded to England to study law. My mother took us to our village, Amudi Obizi, Ezinihite, where we lived with our paternal grandmother, Mema Nzenwa, in the expansive Nzenwa compound, with many uncles and their various families. Grandma Mema and our maternal grandparents, Chinyere, Otochere, and Nwekenia, imbued in us loads of teaching, which enriched us with the knowledge and experiences that have remained invaluable, and at the same time, indelible. At this stage, I need to place on record that I have six siblings, four females and two males, namely Martina, Agnes, Nenna, Onyinye, Okechuku, and Chikere. Their spouses are Eugene, Magnus, Chuks, Chinedu, Obiageli, and Ogechi. Our paternal grandmother, Mema, died a few months to the return from England of my father in 1959. He took the family to Mwaiha, where he embarked in private pra legal practice under the name of Obisi Chambers, which firm is still open till date. In 1962, he was called up to take the position of secretary and legal advisor of Nigeria Airways, which took us to Lagos until 1966 with the emergence of the Nigerian crisis, and we headed back to the village. The crisis dovetailed into the Nigerian Civil War, and we were in the theater of war named Biafra. From my recollection, the war ended in January 1970, and we resumed schooling in March of that year, and I took the school certificate in 1971. Upon the release of our result in 1972, I went for A-levels at the Queen of Rosary College, QRC on Nietzsche, which was a brief stint as I got into the University of Nigeria the same year of 1972 to study law, and in 1976 graduated. The same year of 1976 saw me in the Nigerian Law School, Victoria Island, Lagos. And in the course of the one year, I was hosted by my relation, who lived in Ikoi, Sir Lawrence Ugoji. It made life in the law school comfortable and convenient. Hence, my family remains ever grateful to day law. My wonderful uncle, maternal uncle, Daniel Onyonoro Chinyere, was my guardian, and he made it a remarkable, experience, a remarkable experience for me. Only the Almighty God will reward him for all he did for me. I was called to buy in 1977, precisely 1st July, and on 26th of August, 1977, I got married to my godsend husband, Peter, at Oredo local government area, Benin City, and the church blessing thereafter at St. Paul's Catholic Church, Airport Road, Benin, all with my father's unconditional consent, accompanied with a letter to that effect. 
At the time of the civil marriage, Peter was a house officer in the University of Benin Teaching Hospital, having graduated from the University of Nigeria in June of the same year, 1977. He lived in a one-room self-contained apartment of the house officer's quarters where we started our marital life journey. It was there we had our first child, Adese, in 1979, and same year we proceeded to Port Harcourt, and the three other children were born in Benin, though we lived in Port Harcourt, as the University of Benin Teaching Hospital operated with excellence in view, and the medical personnel representing the best of the best, and my husband imbibed that orientation, which he was to emulate later, when he established his own hospital of Pamo clinics and hospitals in 1980. I must at this stage name our children. Adeze, a medical doctor, consultant in family health in the Federal Ministry of Health. Chinelo, High Court Judge of River State. Peter, medical microbiologist working in NSITF. Njideka, High Court Judge of the FCT. Our two sons-in-law, Onka, an engineer of Tutal Oye Company, and Ozoma, a legal practitioner. Career path. I started my youth service in Abeokuta, Ogun State, in 1977 in the Ministry of Justice, DPP Department, as a People's State Council. And some of my colleagues were Fatima O. Akimbami, JCA, Ni Abdullahi, Justina Waka, Ni Oputa, Johnny Okoji, and Edwin Okoji, uh, Osuho, and others. I made a lot of effort to get transferred to Benin, and in the course of that period had a miscarriage in Benin, which the youth court director, Mr. Shoebe, chose to disbelieve that I was hospitalized in spite of the medical report. That period of being in hospital earned me a four-month extension of service to be done in Benin City. Hence, I found myself in the Bendel State Ministry of Justice as a pupil state council. Before the end of that extension of service, applied, I applied to the Bendel State Judiciary for the post of a magistrate, and the then Chief Judge, Victor Oviowiski, graciously made it possible by appointing me Magistrate Group 3 in 1978, since I had not made two years post call to the bar as prescribed by the Bendel State law to be appointed to the stage of Magistrate Group 2. Again, in his methodical way, Upon my attainment of two years, I got promoted to grade two. I pray God rest his soul, and to his family we owe a debt of gratitude. In 1979, Peter and I headed for Port Harcourt. As Peter got employed in a private clinic, I got appointed magistrate grade two by the Honorable Justice Donald Graham Douglas, the then Chief George. Peter opened his hospital in 1980 in rented premises with the name PAMO acronym for Peter, Mary, and Adese, as she was the only child we had at the time. My journey in the judiciary continued, and I climbed every ladder of the magistracy till 1992 when I became a high court judge. In 2004, I got elevated to the Court of Appeal with the encouragement of the President of the Court of Appeal at that time, Omaru Farouk Abdullahi, PCA, Honorable Justice F. F. Tabai, Honorable Justice J. Ogebe, Honorable Justice M. O. Onolaja, Honorable Justice Silvanos Nsofo, M. E. Apiroro J. J. C. A., as they then were, and few others. I am grateful for the urging from these great men and the permission from my husband to take up the venture. In 2011, to my shock, the President of the Court of Appeal then then, Ayo Issa Salami asked me to send my resume and 10 judgments for appointment to the Supreme Court. I did not see the feasibility, and Peter and I had a great laugh, laugh at the joke. The words of Honorable Justice Salami when I took the papers to his office were soothing and fatherly, and I remain grateful to him. I was at the time presiding justice of the Court of Appeal Kaduna Division, and as only God would make possible the unreal, I got to the apex court and the pinnacle of my judicial career. There is need to acknowledge with many thanks a few of those who made my judicial journey memorable. Some of them are resting with the good Lord 
and some alive. They are Honorable Chief Justices Mohamed Bello, Mohamed Lawal Uwais, Alpha Belgore, Aloysius Katsinalu, Dahiru Mustafa, Mahmoud Mohamed, Walter Nogan, and Ibrahim Tanko Mohamed, who also was my first presiding justice in the Court of Appeal Abuja Division. I must mention with gratitude Honorable Justice, Justice O.O. Adekeye, Bode Rhodes Viva, Suleiman Galadima, Clara Ogumbiyi, Amiru Sanusi, Sidi Bage Mohamed, JJ SC, and the current president of the Court of Appeal, Monica Domba Mensi, Honorable Justice Constance Momo, retired Chief Judge of Edo State, and Honorable Justice J. Omorodion, who I understudied in the magistracy. I cannot but put on paper the wonderful relationship I have enjoyed with my noble lords of the Supreme Court, who have served with me and who I can no longer refer to as current colleagues having made 70 years at midnight. I cherish and can never forget what we have shared in the spirit of brotherhood while I was in service in the Apex Court. I recall in the same vein my cordial relationship with erstwhile colleagues in the Court of Appeal, High Court, and Magistracy. In the course of my duties as a judicial officer, I have had a lot of help and enriching experiences from members of the bar. And as points of contact, I shall mention a few to stand in for the numerous others. Senior Advocates for Lakesho Lanke, Osijo Okocha, Okewale, Paul Usoro, Ife Dayo Adedikwe, Lucius Mosu, Adeboyega Awomolo, Victoria Awomolo, Chris Uche, P.I.N. Ikweto, Mike Ozokeme, Mohamed Belo Adoki, Livi Uzuku, Isi Okala, Jude Nodum, Kanu Agabi, Demian Dodo, Wale Olanikweku, Dele Adeshino, Latif Fagwemi, Emeka Ngige, Boma Aladi, Emeka Etiaba, Emeka Obegolu, Yusuf Ali, Ahmed Raji, S.T. Hon, Lawal Rabana, Epiphany and Valerie Azingi, Kainde Ogu Miju, J.S. Okutekpa, Charles Uemsui Edosoma, Awa Kalo, Godi Uche, Dem Priscilla Kuye, Ulumide Akpata, President of the Bar, and Pauline Abulime. There are many others, the space cannot contain them. Journey of Life. I had earlier recounted my childbearing years. The children did not come without enormous sacrifices, care and attention in the course of duty by the personnel of the University of Benin Teaching Hospital between 1977 to 1984. I am grateful to them all, professors, consultants, doctors, nurses, paramedicals, other staff in the hospital, student nurses, and I will use a few as points of contact. My doctor, who delivered all the children by caesarean section, Professor Mike Dejumao and his wife Lizzie, Professor Linus Ajabo and Christy Ajabo, his wife, Metron Osagede, Adeswa E. Munjeze, and Mrs. Eunice Ebie. I have to acknowledge with gratitude the role played by my teachers at the University of Nigeria. I would mention a few of them to stand in for the many others. Professor Chijoke Ogurike, Professor Cyprian Okonkwo, Professor Edwin Mwogugu, Professor B.O. Okere, Professor Ewuluka, Professor Eze Jofo, Leonard Senior Advocates Clement Abambo, Jerome Okolo, Professor Ilochi Okafo. At midnight, again, as I said, I attend 70 years by the special grace of God. And upon that happening, I have broken into the select group of elders of our nation. <laughs> it therefore behoves on me the duty to speak with the platform open to me today as a retired justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. I intend to do so with the concept of taking the option of, quote, dying on my feet than living on my knees. Unquote, a postulation of Emilio Zapata Salazar, the Mexican leader in the revolution of 1910 to 1920. 
in the spirit of one who has lived through a lot of experiences and accosted by knowledge, good and bad, I will speak to my countrymen, women and children, loud and clear. As I had earlier mentioned, I lived through the Nigerian Civil War, which was precursed by the January 15, 1966 Army Coup and later the July 1966 pogrom, as it was referred to. In the July incident, I saw with my eyes men running in their underpants with and without singlets from the Ikeja Army Cantonment, which presentation made us leave our home at Ikeja GRA as the killings moved from the Igbo soldiers in the barracks to civilian population of Igbos, and we had to take refuge in a one room, in a room in Surulere, and later to the east and the follow-up war that incepted in 1967. During the war, we survived the air raids with the bombers and fighters as low as the height of fruit trees, with me catching the eyes of one of the pilots on one occasion. I am bringing this period up not to whip up animosities or negative feelings, but to call to mind to all and sundry the emergency situation which now faces our nation. Some of the actions or speeches that propelled the unfortunate war, which took the lives of millions of our compatriots, are being reenacted at this time, hence the necessity for this reminder. I am delving into this area of our national life in the light of the saying that while one ought not to hold on to the past, but must move forward, the lessons of the past should not be discharged to the dustbins of history, but utilized positively to navigate the present and the future. I have noted with sadness that some of the good initiatives of the war zone and the potentials of persons young and old of that period have been thrown overboard Hence the misfortunes that beset the nation, even at this point in time, with the authorities and individuals looking helplessly on. That is not the way to go, as those good creations and capacities ought to have been deployed as happened in other climes to their advancement. A case in point is the skills acquisition program, which helped in the survival of a lot of people, including the speaker. In that regard, I call to mind what I saw when watching the television in the 1980s, the efforts of Maria Mabacha as wife of the chief of army staff, instituting skills acquisition in army barracks for wives of soldiers. It was Maria Mbabangida that orchestrated the program up to every local government area of the country down to the community level. The programs were later to be propelled under the family support program. I bring these efforts up because what seems to be happening in our polity is that in denigrating the spouses of those women, the laudable efforts they had espoused and championed are left unattended, but treated as NGO affairs or women's prepared projects, instead of having them given full steam by government at all levels, with success assured, and the current menace, albeit emergency situation, of unemployment with the attendant insecurity that has followed. The millions of idle youth is not unrelated to the insecurity on ground. The urgency of what we are faced with right now calls for the necessity or immediacy in tackling them. The matter has become a behemoth of sorts that need no further delay in solving. That is the reason that I propose that the head of state should take on the gap of Minister of Youth, Employment and Social Welfare, or such related name, so that he directs the implementation of what is called for and put in place without middlemen, utilizing assistance of adequate and qualified personnel. Similarly, the governors of the respective states take over such ministries as the situation is needed to be done to stem the current tragic situation. The massive unemployment of tertiary institution graduates is the tip of the iceberg as the conditions of the non-graduates, who are numerous in number, have made the matter of great concern. The situation is not helped by the perennial strikes which leave students roaming for months on end or idling away with their thoughts 
better imagined. I have brought this up because the solution I proffer was tried out in River State and it worked. Therefore, I implore that it be tried once more, but this time nationally and with urgency. The government of River State under Dr. Peter Dilly did it and it worked between 2005 to 2007. Again, an area that should be given a consideration is the retirement of our uniformed men and women, military, police, in their prime with the expertise and high degree of training obtained nationally and internationally. These retired personnel are now too numerous and left to rot at their various homes with their knowledge not utilized, a situation that is worthy of attention by the authorities which the apparatus of government can factor the use or uses for these highly trained individuals to the benefit of all. I come to another point of anxiety, the matter that has been resonating for some time, restructuring. I cannot say much on it, as I know little on the subject. However, my concern stems from the fact that some of the people who have been harping on it are very serious men with acuity of intellect accompanied by their respective track records that resound, and so my humble view is that the issue should be given an immediate attention lest we ignore the matter at the risk of a lost opportunity to set the ship of state on the right course. While studying the English language, our teachers told us of, quote, a stitch in time saves nine. In our locality, the Igbo say, Anichuo Ewoji Naihe. Translated, let us search for our black goat during the day. The reason for this adage is that if the goat is not looked for during the day, it blends with the dark at nightfall. The last area I bring to the burner is the matter of state of origin of individuals in our country, which is gauged from the locality of birth of the parents. That a person was born in a place outside the locality of origin of his parents, grows up in this new location, residing and working there in whatever trade, and still considered a stranger, has negative connotations in my humble opinion. Therefore, I posit, a person's state can be gauged by the number of years he has lived in a given place and his choice. The follow-up on this matter of state of origin or residency and the import thereto have thrown up the fact that the women have seen themselves taking the short end of the stick on account of marriage outside the state of their birth. These are matters that need urgent attention in our journey of nationhood and the building and sustaining thereof. Having put across these views from my position in the Council of Elders, <laughs> I would now state with thankfulness to God that I have enjoyed the goodwill of our compatriots from all spheres of human endeavor, which was showcased when our home was invaded by persons whose mission and sponsors remain unclear. In that regard, my gratitude goes to all who identified with our family and the role in the resistance played by His Excellency Nyesom Wike, Governor of River State, and his team, and the security operatives at our residence. This is deeply appreciated. It is difficult and humanly impossible to capture the names of all, the media, individuals, groups, communities, leadership, and members of the National Assembly that identified with our family. I say on behalf of the Peter Odili family, may God bless you all and send helpers to you in your time of need. Further appreciation. The grace of God has been on full display in my life, which out of his making has taken very dramatic turns. Hence, my unending terms of gratitude to God and man. It is from the Almighty that I got the great fortune of being granted a great and wonderful special man named Peter Otunoya Odini from Ndoni in River State, who has showered me with love and all the material luxuries at his disposal. He further placed me in a family where the members of the enlarged Odili did not see me as a newcomer, 
but as an original member, and his brothers, their wives and sisters, taking me as siblings. I use this opportunity to redeclare really my everlasting love to you, my beloved husband. My gratitude also to our children and their spouses. My thanks to Mr. Sylvester Nzenwa, the current head of Nzenwa family, my uncle Dan, head of the Chinyere family, the Odili enlarged family, General Peter and Rose Adomokai. I am also grateful to our beautiful eight grandchildren as we pray for more. I cannot fail to acknowledge the trailblazing role of the Honorable Justice Atinu Keige, Justice of the Court of Appeal of Blessed Memory, and Honorable Justice Fatih Abubakar, retired Chief Judge of Niger State, which judicial officers prevailed in their duties despite the political and national positions of their husbands. Chief Bola Ige, Governor of Oyo State, and husband of Justice Atinu Keige, General Abdul Salam Abubakar, Head of State, and husband of Justice Fatih Abubakar. The courage and strength of these females to persevere in their professions and duties in spite of those temporary attainments of their spouses were the score I needed to get on with the task at hand when Peter became deputy governor in the Old River State between 1992 and 1993 and later in 1999 when he was governor up till 2007. I would here capture the immense gratitude I bear for those who have associated with me and our family in various capacities. I have, I don't know how I omitted the Bishop of Sokoto Diocese, Matthew Hassan Kankuka. Okay. And I would mention those are our associates, DSP Isaac Onyeso, ASP Madaki Chidawa, Jema and Patie Kanyaun, Adebisi Ogunseye, Edith Amadi, Mahmoud Abubaka, Ifeyinwa Josiah, Abdulaziz Oniongi, Josiah Garba, Simeon Ebu, Sani Salisu, and Abdul Meshedu, among others. To the glory be to the God Almighty for this extraordinary day of my exit from the National Judiciary. I say to you all many thanks, and God bless you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Well, uh, I would say that this is historical. As a lawyer, we always celebrate those who have distinguished themselves at the legal profession, and uh, most especially at the bench. Today, we are celebrating not only a distinguished lawyer, but we are also celebrating an icon, a woman. You know, when women who do this, uh, they are distinguished. Uh, we watch, and as lawyers, we also read judgments. We've appeared before them several times. And we know some of them that are very, very hardworking. Today, she's taking a bow at age at 70. I've known her not today, but uh, my frequency when her husband was uh, the, pre the governor of River State. I got acquainted with the family, and today I was also privileged to be part of this ceremony. And I read from, heard from the history, 
is an encouragement to those who are also coming up in the legal profession. Somebody who has gotten the level of a Supreme Court just, justice, bowing out meritoriously, and leaving even uh, behind her two or three of her children who are also high court judges, uh, high court justices, is a no mean achievement. So that is why I came here to also celebrate and also to wish her a very happy birthday. Okay, Your Excellency, being a lawyer and a member of the APC and the governor, yes. um, the, the Court of Appeal ruled yesterday that uh, Section 8412 uh, is unconstitutional. Uh, what do you say to political appointees who are still in office and uh, the issues around all of that? No, maybe you read the judgment upside down. It didn't say it is unconstitutional. Uh, it said that the man who brought the case had no locals to bring the case. However, it said that the, null, the, the, the nullification, that is the other aspect of the case. I don't want to be the one interpreting it. Uh, Attorney General is there, but I am uh, a member of the party, and the president has already started implementing it. He said those who want to contest, should for, to avoid any legal problem, should leave before Monday. For me, I had already taken a step. About two months ago, I had asked my appointees, political appointees, that whoever wanted to contest should submit his resignation. They had submitted all their resignations. So I had already complied with that. I was envisaging that it would bring problem. And so because of that, many governors had already implemented. Maybe it's now federal government is implementing, but I had already implemented. If you ask my people, those who wanted to contest the election had already tentered their resignation. Sir, lastly, sir, it's, it's, okay, it's, okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. From one court to another, what's your assessment of Nigerian judiciary as a No, I cannot give you that now. I cannot give you that. But if you want, wait, I am going to soon commission the best high court in the whole north. If you come there, you will listen to what I will say. Thank you, Excellency. Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.